Hello, welcome to Edupedia World Video. In this video, we will talk about world ancient history. Let us begin. After the Ice Age ended, small populations of people began multiplying and inhabiting all continents. Before they migrated to different places, however, they all lived together in one small area. Most historians believe that their oldest homeland, the place of habitation of the first people, was somewhere in East Africa or Middle East area. We do not know that for sure. The only thing we can be sure of is that the first ancient civilization emerged exactly in Middle East area, in what is today Iraq. In classical antiquity, it was called Mesopotamia by ancient Greeks, which means the land between two rivers. Those two rivers are Tigris and Euphrates. This fertile land was an ideal home for the first prehistoric people. Founding of the first civilization marked the end of the so-called prehistory and the beginning of the historic periods, or history proper. Of course, prehistory is also a part of human history. We do not have to call it prehistory, or in any other way. It is only a name given by modern historians for the most distant past, in order to easily track the timeline of history. As homeland of the first people, Mesopotamia is also called the birthplace of human civilization. Eventually, all nations existing today emerged from this first civilization, having dispersed all over the world in later period. Still, there is one question here that needs to be answered, and that question is, how was it possible for all nations to emerge from the very small group of prehistoric people? Even though we could say they multiplied in great numbers in the course of time, there is a problem with that small group of populations multiplication. They could not produce all existing nations because of the genetic deformation and mutations potential present in small group of population. In other words, they would have to marry with each other cousins, which would have eventually led to physical disappearance of humans. The same applies to the very first humans we have talked about in our previous video. How could all the prehistoric and modern people emerge from a very small number of first humans? It would have only been possible if their genetic mutations potential was somewhat different from the modern people potential. And that could have only been true if completely different climate and life conditions existed during those times. Some that must have been quite the opposite from the Ice Age world conditions. Scientists believe early people were genetically purer, so to say, because they were the first existing people. And only in later times did the genetic mutations potential increase due to certain biological processes in the human body. The final answer to this question remains to be proved. Another related unsolved question concerning the beginning of ancient history is the origin of languages. The main difference between different nations has always been the language. So the question is, how did different languages emerge? Did they all emerge from one single language first humans spoke in the beginning? Or did different languages emerge at almost the same time? This simple but fundamental question was never completely solved by historians and other scientists. They could only offer theories, which were never proven. Although majority of linguists believe all languages were gradually forming 
from the original language or languages of the first people in the course of time. It is important to note, however, that different languages could not possibly have appeared for no rational reason, by chance or through any known natural process, no matter how much time elapsed. That way, only completely related languages could have appeared, like English, German and Dutch, which used to be one language in ancient times, or like Russian, Polish and Slovenian, which also used to be one language in ancient times. But this is not the case in unrelated languages, such as Chinese and Arabian, for example. So again, historians do not have any reliable answer to this basic and seemingly simple question. The only thing we can be sure of is that all different languages and all different nations living today descended from the ancient and prehistoric people who lived in Middle East area in the very beginning, that is, in Mesopotamia. Population growth, technology development and improved life conditions resulted in dispersal of the first people and their arrival to different areas of the world, where they founded the first ancient civilizations. Naturally, the oldest civilizations were situated in Mesopotamia and its vicinity, while the other civilizations were spurred in more distant areas in later periods. You may wonder how could have ancient people come to America from Mesopotamia and Asia. It is unlikely they sailed from Asia through Pacific or from Europe through Atlantic Ocean. Well, one of the explanations is that they reached America on foot, traveling across the frozen Bering Strait. Many such northern areas were still under ice because of the Ice Age. We may note that all first ancient civilizations, like Sumer, Egypt, India, Greece and so on, emerged in the area between far north and far south, in relatively narrow area of the planet. That was the case from two reasons. First, that area was very close to their ancient homeland in Mesopotamia, so they needed much more time to reach lands in the far north or south. And the second reason is that those northern and southern areas were still pretty much under ice, and the climate there was still unbearable. As those areas under ice receded, people were gradually moving more towards both north and south. Even today there are remains of the Ice Age on Greenland, Iceland and northern parts of America, Europe and Asia, as well as on Antarctic. Now let's say something more about those first civilizations. Ancient civilizations were not primitive at all, quite the opposite. Historians wonder how it was possible for those people to found so great and advanced civilizations in such a quick manner. The answer is simple. Those ancient people were not more inferior or in any other way different from people living today. Let's have a quick look on their achievements. Ancient Egyptians, Sumerians, Greeks, Persians, Hindu people, and the other ancient nations were the founders of modern science. They excelled in mathematics, physics, astronomy, architecture, historiography, medicine and all other sciences. Their very complex and accurate lunisolar calendar systems, harmonized with natural cycles and celestial objects movement, speaks for itself about their knowledge of astronomy. They observed the stars, planets and comets, made many astronomical calculations of their position and movements, and they could predict eclipses 
of the sun and moon. Ancient Sumerians were those who divided the circle into 360 degrees, hour into 60 minutes and minute into 60 seconds, as they used the number system with the base 60. Many mathematics theories and formulas we use today were actually invented during this ancient period of history. Modern medicine is not any better than medicine in those times. Ancient people were able to make medications, which were analogous to modern pharmaceutical drugs. They had knowledge about human anatomy, used medical instruments, and even performed surgeries. They also had dentists who were able to implant tooth fillings. Tools and weapons they used were also complex and made of different materials. They used war machines, which could have only been designed by very educated and intelligent people. Concerning warfare, Chinese used explosive even in those times. Architecture of ancient ages is a story for itself. Ancient people built enormous objects, even bigger than buildings of modern times, such as palaces, temples, city walls, towers, pyramids, and so on. They had schools as well, in which children and young people were taught all of these sciences, as well as different arts and philosophy. Above all, they were taught to write and read, as many writing systems were already developed, and many documents were already written down. Writing systems of ancient people were much more complex than modern scripts. They used pictographic, cuneiform, form, and syllabic scripts. Pictographic scripts, like the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, were composed of various pictures and ideographs. Cuneiform script, like the Sumerian script, was composed of signs and lines which were impressed into soft clay, while syllabic scripts, like Minoan syllabic scripts, were a later development, composed of signs which represented syllables. In essence, those early people from ancient ages did not much differ from modern people. In literally every single aspect of life, they were the same as modern people. There is no difference, except that they did not have electricity, for instance, which does not, however, make them inferior to us, because majority of people today do not know how to make electricity, but only use the invention of other people from the past. Most of the inventions we use today and most of the knowledge about the world we possess today should be attributed to people from the most distant past, to our ancestors of the ancient period. As far as religion is concerned, it was complex enough and also very similar to modern day religion practices and customs. Ancient people mostly practiced polytheistic religion systems, that is, the belief in many gods. Only ancient Hebrews practiced monotheism, that is, the belief in one god. However, there are some indications that even other ancient nations practiced monotheistic religion before corrupting it into polities. For instance, one of numerous examples of ancient Egyptian hymns is devoted to only one god, and it goes like this. There is only one creator of all, the hidden spirit, the creator of all the other spirits. He was from the beginning when nothing else existed. He breathed the breath of life into the nostrils of men. He hears those who call him, he prize his servants, he knows those who accept him, he protects his subjects. The Hindu epic Rig Veda tells us the very same story. World-renowned Sanskritologists, such as Max Miller, 
wrote about that former Indian monotheism in this way. There is a monotheism that precedes the polytheism of the Veda, and even in the invocation of the innumerable gods, the remembrance of a god, one and infinite, breaks through the mist of idolatrous phraseology like the blue sky that is hidden by passing clouds. Indian central tribe used to be monotheistic. They say it simply. We did not have a vast number of gods before. Our ancestors revered only Takurji. Today they tell us that Takurji is the sun god, but our ancestor taught us that he was not a sun god, but he was the creator of the whole world. Scientists debate even today about this antiquity of both monotheism and politics, about their origin and the origin of religion itself. As mentioned in previous lecture, most of modern historians believe that ancient people were very superstitious and unintelligent, which resulted in making up stories about fictitious gods and mythological beings. However, this is not a proven fact, especially because the difference between polytheistic and monotheistic religion systems is not only in the number of gods, but the differences are much more profound. Ancient polytheistic people practiced human sacrifice and did many other hideous acts in the name and honor of their gods. On the other hand, ancient monotheistic people were strictly forbidden by law to commit any similar act that these polytheistic people did commit. Monotheistic religion systems promoted human life as something most valuable in the whole universe. The monotheistic god is described in ancient writings of monotheistic people in a completely different manner than the so-called gods and goddesses described in the writings of ancient polytheistic people. So, were gods or god invented up by ancient people because of their presumed superstition and ignorance? And what about mythological beings and divine heroes of myths and legends of all ancient peoples? Was every nation's mythology only a collection of fairy tales and stories about fictitious people and events? Is it all just a lie? We know that every nation possesses mythology, that is, a great number of orally transmitted unusual stories about events from the most distant past. Those stories mention many gods and mythological beings, such as dragons, giants or monsters. Although many people, and especially historians, would say that those stories were just fairy tales that had nothing to do with real history, nonetheless ancient historians themselves gave us a precise answer to the question of those gods and heroes' identity. Let's have a look at some of the ancient texts and learn that way how to use historical sources for finding out the truth about our past. Ancient Greek historian Diodorus Siculus, for example, wrote this. It is said that all gods used to live on earth before, and that they were mortals, who deserved to be immortalized because of their great wisdom and exploits. The famous Roman orator Cicero wrote this. Greek writers said even their own greatest gods were once mortals who lived on earth. Greeks openly talk about the tombs of their gods. Another ancient Roman historian called Plinius the Elder wrote about it in the same way. Glorifying people as gods is a custom from most ancient times. All names of those gods were the names of people who had done great exploits in the name of humanity. Ancient Greek writer Ursanius recorded this. 
people of those ages became gods and are revered as gods today. Aristus, Hercules, Pollux, Castor. And the famous old theologian Augustine wrote about it in the same manner. Gods mentioned by pagan authors were ordinary people. Despite that, pagan nations worshipped them as gods. From all writings of the ancient historians, we can see that those gods and heroes from the mythology of their own nations were nothing else but normal, ordinary people, humans, who were only deified and called gods and heroes because they excelled in their virtues and exploits. They were famous people, kings, conquerors and military leaders who lived in so distant past that future generations of ancient ages remember them only vaguely through oral stories, tradition and consider them so great and important that they call them gods. This is what ancient historians said about them. And indeed, gods and heroes from the ancient myths and legends of all nations in the world are described primarily as famous people who lived in distant past, who were born as all other people, who had parents and family, who ate food and drank, wore clothes, sang, danced, laughed and cried, and who eventually died, as all other people do. This means that myths and legends about gods and other mythological beings represent vague memories on significant historical events and real people from the most distant past. The only thing we must do is to identify who those famous people were, whom other people and future generations honored as gods and heroes. Therefore, just remember that a great part of ancient mythologies should be considered as a reliable and important historical source, which is very useful in studying the remote, obscure past of human history. Mythologies should not be looked at exclusively as made-up fantastic stories that has almost nothing to do with history and reality. Besides, it should be noted that all ancient nations had nearly identical myths and legends, and their so-called gods and heroes were described in the same way. The only single difference is in their names, because of the language differences. It is quite interesting and perhaps unusual to find that literally every nation from various places of the world shared the exact same stories about the most distant past. Even all modern historians agree that ancient nations all really did possess the same myths and legends, that their mythologies have the same roots and origin. The only problem is that most people do not know how it could be possible, because they believe that all ancient nations invented up those stories, which would imply that people from around the whole globe invented up completely identical stories at almost the same time. Is that possible? So, next time you hear about some ancient myth or a fairy tale, try to find out what historical event it is based on, knowing that all myths and legends represent the memory of the most significant events from distant past. Yes, even the Cinderella story, for example, is partially based on the memory of one famous historical event that occurred in remote past. Try to find out which one it is. Though it may sound a bit odd at first, it is certainly more logical than saying that ancient people invented up stories for no rational reason about events and people that never existed. Now we shall move on to a story about each of the ancient civilizations, such as Sumer, Babylonia, Egypt, India, and others. Let's start from the old Sumerian civilization. Sumerian civilization is considered to be the oldest civilization in history. 
as it emerged right in Mesopotamia, the homeland of all nations' ancestors. Actually, Sumer is only another name for Mesopotamia. Many large cities were founded in the fertile Mesopotamian plain during those ancient times. The most known cities were Ur, Kish, Akkad, Lagash and Babel. These cities were completely independent and were not united in larger kingdoms or states, as in later ages. Those were the so-called city-states. They were governed by the tribe leader or the most prominent man among the small group of people that lived there. As we mentioned in previous lecture about prehistoric wars, at the dawn of ancient history even more wars ensued between different tribes and these city-states, either because of life supplies deficit or for plundering and conquering other city possessions. The latter refers to aggressive and warlike tribes and their leaders who used force to satisfy their needs. However, each of those warlike tribes eventually vanished from history because of their misdeeds and crimes, as we shall see in our next lectures. One of the first of those conquerors was the king Sargon the Great, who conquered the whole of Mesopotamia and even adjacent territories. It was one of the first world empires, called Akkadian Kingdom, after its capital city, Akkad. The Mesopotamian or Sumerian city-states gained their independence back after the fall of Akkadian Kingdom. Though they still waged many wars against each other and against other tribes and nations that inhabited territories around Mesopotamia, while they were quarreling among each other over material possessions, other warlike tribes and conquerors came to summer in the mid-time, replacing the Akkadians. One of those ancient tribes were the Amorites. The famous Amorite king, Hammurabi, conquered Sumerian city-states and formed the Babylonian kingdom, called after his capital city Babel, or Babel. King Hammurabi is primarily known today for his code of laws, called the Code of Hammurabi. This code consisted of 282 laws and was based upon the eye for an eye principle. That means if someone would break the law and harm someone else, he would be punished in the same way the harm had been committed. For example, the punishment for all murderers was the death sentence. Though it may seem as a very cruel law, it could nonetheless prevent crime from occurring. Also, this code concerned many different aspects of life in Hammurabi's kingdom, but it mainly concerned morality issues. The Code of Hammurabi was written in cuneiform script in Akkadian language, which was a Semitic language, like modern Arabic or Hebrew language. The code was carved into a large stele that is preserved till this day. This is a good example of material historical source for studying the ancient history of Mesopotamia. This code is often considered to be one of the oldest written legal documents. However, there were many other older codes of law from different Mesopotamian rulers. The Code of Hammurabi was nothing new in the ancient world, because legal system was fully developed much before his reign. Ancient people had many laws that they needed in order to live in a more organized and peaceful ambience, and in order to protect themselves from the aggressors. The same way we have written laws today that should be made to help people live a safer and better life. In our next lecture, we will be talking more about the ancient world nations and kingdoms. Thank you for watching Edupedia World Video.